Hi everyone, Dr. Danny Lockwood here, and today we're going to talk about Hashimoto's flare-up. So what are the symptoms of a Hashimoto's flare-up? So you may or may not know Hashimoto's is low thyroid due to an autoimmune condition. Some of the things that you might see when you have something like this is fatigue, brain fog, just can't quite think right, feeling cold. A lot of my patients will say cold hands and feet. They'll definitely talk about circulation issues or just they just feel cold all the time. Weight gain or trouble losing weight. So before with exercise and proper nutrition, they were able to lose and get down to a healthy weight. But when they're having a flare, it's much more difficult to do. Constipation, muscle weakness, dry skin, and of course, hair loss. So those are some of the symptoms that we'd get with a Hashimoto's flare up. Why? Okay, so let's do a quick review of the anatomy. So the first signal that we're going to get to our thyroid gland is from the anterior pituitary. I like to call it the ant pit. That is located inside the brain. The brain gives a signal that releases TSH, which then, which that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, that gets to the thyroid itself and then it produces something called T4, which is an inactive form of the thyroid, but it's the precursor to the active form of thyroid called T3, okay? So we need a couple things in place in order for that to happen. Number one, you need healthy adrenal glands. This is my terrible drawing of kidneys, and on top of those kidneys are triangle-shaped glands called the adrenal glands. These let out our fight or flight hor hormones, and they have a relationship with stimulating back up to the brain again. I should probably draw a picture of that. So this will actually go back up and give a cue to the brain. So if you're really stressed, if you're under fight or flight, then there's no proper signal to release this hormone, thyroid stimulating hor hormone or TSH. What else do we need? We need proper nutrition, specifically zinc and selenium. Now be careful with these because these are trace minerals, meaning that you can't take them in high dosages, otherwise it can cause problems with your immune system. If you have too much zinc, it could cause terrible acne and it can be toxic. So make sure to talk to your doctor or provider about that. The next thing you need is a healthy liver. We get a lot of signaling and detoxing and recycling from the liver, so we definitely need to make sure our liver is working well. So what are the causes of this? So let's talk about that. The first thing that comes to my mind is what is happening in your life. So either an acute or chronic stress, overexertion, poor diet, especially if we start to overdo it on the carbohydrates, that messes with our blood sugar and that definitely stresses out our adrenal glands and our liver, okay? Not moving, sitting down too long, not exercising. Exercise is actually something that will stimulate proper thyroid function, so we need to move. Illness, and really, I think this is one of the main underlying causes of why people are getting autoimmune diseases, right? So illness leads to inflammation, which leads to harboring stealth pathogens. We got another video about EBV that we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then of course, decrease in nutrients because we need specific nutrients to help this whole system work correctly. So what are some of the nutrients we need? B vitamins, we need enough protein. We need enough protein because protein gives us B vitamins. Magnesium, vitamin E, C, and D. So these are all really good for the immune system they're also really good in helping make antioxidants and stimulating healthy function within these glands. Tyrosine, tyrosine is great for energy and it is an amino acid that helps with neurotransmitters as well as specifically helping with energy production within the thyroid gland. Iron and of course iodine. And iodine isn't just iodine from iodized salt. We do want natural sources of iodine. So I recommend something like a sea kelp or seaweed or um, something that a potassium iodide, which has been enhanced. I'm not a huge fan of iodized salt. It's a really cheap form of iodine and the body doesn't love it. Okay, so this 
pretty much sums up why we might see symptoms of Hashimoto's flare up. Please leave a comment below, ask any questions, and we'd love to help you get lots of awesome information. Have a great day.